Hello and welcome to another episode of Buddhism Broadcast. I'm joined by uh, by Jendo. This is how he goes now. Hey, yeah. Ninja. My, my my name has been turned to Jendo because I I don't know Greg and Ben bestowed it upon me. You, yeah, ben, you, you're ben a, you're a Nintendo, upon you are a Nintendo person. Ninjendo. I am a Nintendo guy. Now I'm Jendo. Nintendo. Nintendo. No, it's just Jendo. Mm. I'm not going to call you by your short name. This is a professional show. We keep thinking oh, professional. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got to keep it professional. Ninjendo. Mm. And, this is, uh, um, this like, week's a big privilege, isn't yeah. it, for everyone? It is because this bit. is the first show that has ever been voted for. I know. This is the yeah. first democratically the elected. people have spoken. Indeed. So um, this week... We didn't have much in the way of content because the Games Bulletin website was down, which was also very sad. We were all crying. Um, it's so just been light on news as well in general. So. It, yeah, yeah, the it's news also has been, been a bit of a, Yeah, a bit of a shit news week. So um, we figured we would see what the people wanted. And the people wanted us, the show, to go on. They wanted it to go on no, no yeah. matter what, even if we have nothing good to do. Mm. So, so we plan. kind of ramble on. Yeah, we kind of um, we was just like, oh, okay, uh, pe- people do want this. We best pull something out of our asses and <laughs> try and get something in, in motion. And uh, Greg came up with the idea of just talking about games that we're looking forward to this year. Yeah. Um, we we extended it a little bit to include games that we would like to see. Correct. But for, ah. for the most part, it is. I I have three games here that I'm looking forward to. I have a, a good handful, but we'll just say three as well. I mean, I have five. Um, then uh, let's let's let you go first. I've got more to burn through. Yeah. Okay. Are we gonna do like each person is gonna say all of theirs? Are we gonna go like one at a time? Each person does one, or like uh, we'll, we'll go one at a time. We'll, we'll switch around. Okay. Hit us, Greg. What are you looking forward to this year? Wait, so I'm doing all five of mine, and then you guys do yours once. No, no, just just pick one, and then we'll, we'll yeah, just pick one. We'll go through this. everybody. Well, let's start with um, Shadow of War, oh. um, the game that I, I that's the Shadow of Mordor sequel. Um, it, I think it looks really good. I'm like I saw the trailer, and I you know obviously it's a trailer, but I saw it and I thought that's got a lot of potential. I'm really fucking excited for that game. I'm really hyped. There's a lot of games this year that I'm really excited for. I have to admit, I watched the um, the gameplay <clears throat> trailer they did. They did like 16 oh, minutes yeah, of same. gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like a massive improvement on the first one. The first one didn't pique my interest at all. Mm. I played the first one. I really liked it. The only thing I didn't like about it is it was really hard. Every time you died, all the, N- the NPCs and everything and all the bad guys went up a level and they got stronger every time you died. And That's right. The, the, the first one, it could the whole sometimes... Nemesis system. Yeah, the ne- it was so cool, the Nemesis system. No, yeah, it was awesome, but it was um, fairly but difficult. It was a little flawed in, in the way you say, Jared, because sometimes you get an enemy that would be really difficult because of like because they have like certain traits and strengths and things, um, mm. and you and you'd get you'd end up getting like an orc that like your nemesis that you're trying to assassinate, and every time you ki- try to kill him, um, his strength his like he'll become immune to a new thing so he's now immune to arrows he's now immune to stealth attacks he's now immune to when you hit him with a sword does and that can stack? only be exactly. killed when you trip him over or something. does that stack so it, does he does he become resistant to multiple things yeah. yes oh jesus and what's worse well. is every time you die from them they go up in rank so there's like you have like the start men or the menu thing that has all the ranks of the orcs. And when mm. you lose to them, they're able to go up in a rank, which makes them even harder than they were before, plus having all those immunities as well. Yeah. Wow. So but I was like, I, you know what? I'm done. I can't it's do it. Such I, I love the game. I love the idea behind that. Um I l- would love to see it fleshed out because it also became quite repetitive. Mm-hmm. Um mm. and I I'm I'm looking forward to what they do with it. I'm looking forward to because they at, at the at the basics there, they've got one of the most original games that's come out in the AAA space in a while. Oh, and yeah. I mean, with especially with their, like, how the Nemesis system was, you would think that people would have replicated that as well, too, but no one's done it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I've not seen anything on it. Exactly. Well, Maybe I they just don't of... want to touch it. Yeah, I can't think of anything that's kind of similar either, actually. They have their own distinct kind of gameplay for their game, and that's theirs. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's piqued my interest. 
I have to look into it more. It's one of those games that I can't make a fixed yeah. judgment on. I haven't seen enough of it. Well, yeah, yeah, that, make, that makes sense. I mean, you can never make a fixed judgment on any game before you've played it, really. Oh, yeah, exactly. We know that trailers can be fucking fake as shit. Oh, ed- editing is like oh, yeah. magic. Yeah. Um, but that's probably my second most anticipated game this year, Shadow of War. Nice. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go next. I'm going to go with number three. So... In this, not the least anticipated, but of the three I have, it's the least anticipated. Um, and that is Injustice Two. Oh, damn it, Ben! You took mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Injustice Two. Yeah, same. Um, I loved the Injustice franchise. I thought it was absolutely like, the, the first game they had was absolutely awesome, and this is just like everything that the first one was. But more. It's just twice as good. Yeah, exactly. And that has me really looking forward to it. I'm not I'm I'm on the fence about the Joker, like the Joker's appearance and the way that he looks in this game mm. is not what I would have gone for. I would have stuck with the one from Injustice One, like that kind of art style. Yeah. This one's very much more like like Leto's Joker. Yeah, I've seen I've seen people being very vocal about how the Joker looks in this one. Yeah, people oh, were shit. not happy. Not he happy looks at like all. a guy I would not want to confront in a dark alley, though. To be fair, he's got a knife. N- yeah, he has a knife in the first one. To be fair, now he I'm did not, have a knife sure. in the first one. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is true, but I, I saw a couple people complaining that his move set looked very similar to the first games. He was identical, I... basically. He has like the canisters oh, really? that he throws on the ground because he has like mm. he he throws a gas canister. Like the R two. You hit R2 and it throws him up in the air. And he has the parry where he uses a knife to, to parry the attacks and stuff. Mm. But it was only a very small section of what you could do with him. Same as with all of the other characters. You see a very, very finite amount of their moveset. But mm. he he is the least impressive that I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I think just the... Uh, the characters that they have and they're showing off in this game are really just the variety of characters that they're having is really cool. Yeah, I mean everybody looks awesome. Like Black Adam. Oh, yeah. uh, I was watching a video that IGN did and they compiled all the super moves together, and it was just absolutely brilliant. Who's who's your favorite character so far that they've been uh, they've announced? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, I'm very on the fence about it. Um, I did enjoy playing as uh, Green Lantern, and Green mm. Lantern's super was my favourite because he he makes this massive mech that he gets into, which was cool to watch. Mm-hmm. But I like the whole just like the armor, customizables and stuff like that in the game. That that, that's the only, well. that's the only thing that's kind of putting me off a little bit. Um, now, so the armor does give buffs, correct? It does buff. Yeah, it is. Okay. It does change some statistics, so mm-hmm. I, that's something that needs to be monitored properly. Yeah, agree. I don't. I always loved like kind of like the alternate costume in games like that as well too. Like especially mm. the first Injustice, how many alternate costumes um, they had available. But like you said, with the armor system and how it gives bus, buffs, it has to be monitored I mean, correctly it, for it to work as well too. It shouldn't be too bad, you know, like, if they kind of, yeah. if they lock it to, like, a skill level or something, so, like, oh, you can't use armor until you're this skill, or, like, some sort of system in place where somebody who's been playing for ages and has all of this game-changing armor won't be playing against somebody who's rather new and doesn't have much. Hmm, this, 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 this sounds familiar. I feel like we talked about this the other day mm. with a certain game that, uh... We shall not speak of because Greg will get upset. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh, Jared, you cheeky bugger! <laughs> uh, Brainiac looks quite cool as well, actually. Oh yeah, I saw his like uh, his like move set gameplay, and it's pretty cool. There's all his like tentacle things and everything. Yeah, it looks awesome. You have any opinions on Injustice, Greg? Um, we talked about this a few weeks ago, and you guys were a lot more enthusiastic about the franchise than me. Um, yeah. I've only played the game once, and it was um, just like ran a friends. Um, we played it for his YouTube channel, and it was yeah, it's a good giggle. So it, I'm I'm like not, 
I'm one of those people that plays Smash just at parties and like just with um, people. Like I wouldn't buy it myself, sort of people. If that makes the, sense. The social fighter. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I can appreciate a good looking game. I can appreciate cool looking characters. Um, I'm not that into a lot of DCs, so I mean I I'm I'm not so personally invested in the joke, so I don't really mind when they rethink his image a bit and all of that. Yeah. Um, I mean I think he looks pretty fucking dangerous. Um, yeah, I mean, he. That's what I mean. Like he, a lot of people were angry about it. He is a lot like Leto's character, but at the same time. I don't know if it the style of it it makes him look a bit more psychopathic than usual. I know that sounds weird. Like the normal Joker, he was he looked like a maniac anyway. Mm-hmm. But this one, well, there's there's something about his art style that it, it brings across this side of like, okay, you're gonna do some serious harm to somebody, and he looks well, a lot more menacing than in in Justice One. As I know it, the Joker, he's sort of the 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 iconic version of the Joker that we all kind of know, um, like instantly, like the the pop culture icon version is like the sort of Joker that we saw in in Justice One, with yeah. the hair back and he looks quite classy in a suit which is purple and he's just like, he's a genius and he's off his fucking nut and. He's not really that physically violent. He's, but he, you know, he's not below it or anything. Mm. He's not above it yeah. even. Um, whereas now they're sort of reinterpreting him to be a bit more. I mean, he, he was originally a gangster, wasn't he? He was a gangster who looked like a Joker, and now they're sort of going back to that to him being a sort of modern day thug mm. gangster. Yeah, sort of this person. is very much what he looks like. He looks like somebody who would be the leader of a modern day gang as opposed yeah. to the the old school gangster hmm. like if you look if you watch like the fucking 60s batman he was literally just a gangster he was he just was a guy exactly. with a tummy gun with a joker yeah like a bright purple suit yeah that's, that's it he, he had he had the tailored suit and a tummy gun and that was about yeah. it the the sort of iconic joker they achieved between then and now the guy in the middle that we all know and love um you know he's uh, i guess they want to try and get away from that they've clearly had their fun with that idea and they want to try and find a new thing so the character doesn't get stagnant uh, you know whatever oh, go for it yeah seems good the I'm old stuff isn't dead the, the you know the old version of him's not dead they're just doing no, more new stuff just with a different version. Different. that's yeah, kind exactly. of one of the things that irritated me a bit was when i was looking around everybody was acting as if everything that came before this version of the Joker was now eradicated and was irrelevant. And it was like, mm. they was trying to wipe it like it never happened. But it, Pe- like you said, it's not all- the case. Yeah. People are always get like that. I mean, um, it, what always comes to mind with me is the Hobbit films and how they're like, Oh no, this is like terrible. They're destroying the Lord of the Rings license and oh, Lord of the Rings is dead to me now. And I'm just like, well, I mean, the old Lord of the Rings films are still there, and and to be fair, guys, the Hobbit films they're not great, but they're not awful either. Like, I think they get a bit too much hate too. But like, mm. you know, the old Lord of the Rings films they're not there. The original Hobbit book it's not gone; it still exists. Like, yeah, it's you know the recreation in the film is not a perfect adaptation, but if you wanted a perfect adaptation, go watch that fucking seventies cartoon where they all speak with weird voices, <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, we must go against the, the orcs in there." Like, yeah, go watch that. <laughs> okay. Right. On to Gendo. What's what do you, what do you got for us? <laughs> yeah, give I'm us, gonna, give us a game. Used to that. I don't get used to that. Um, what well, Splatoon 2? No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, they made fun of me because I like Nintendo. No, I've never played Splatoon. Um one of the games I'm really excited about is actually Prey. Uh, really? It comes out actually on Friday. That's quite soon, isn't it? The fifth. The fifth, yeah. No, yeah, I played the demo recently for it, and it's it's really great. If you haven't played it yet, I definitely recommend trying it out. It definitely has kind of a dishonored, bioshocky kind of feel, especially with all like the powers that you can use in it. But um, it was just the, the story essentially was really interesting, and the I've, enemies. Um, I've been hearing a lot about it. Tell me a bit about mm-hmm. it. So, I've got the impression that it's a bit like Dishonored. Am I off at all there? kind of it's really really weird like the story is hard to explain especially with like the little 
portion of story that you play when you're doing the game. It's like you... It, it's really hard to explain. It's pretty much like conspiracies happening in this world. Okay. Um, and you're waking up and you're, do, you're doing your normal stuff and everything like that. You wake up in your apartment, you go to work, and then you find out that your whole life's like being faked. Like the window that sees out into the skyscrapers, you break it and you're actually in like a testing facility and being tested on and observed and stuff like that. Oh, it's like too. the Truman Show, my I favorite movie of all time. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it, and it definitely has that vibe to it. And like when you first find out that it's a conspiracy where you like you know, throw something at the window or something and then it breaks and then it's just a lab behind the window instead of actually being outside you're just like whoa that's what's cool. going on here yeah it's really cool and then as you're walking through the facility you see how they actually create your reality like there's, like, there's like a fake helicopter that you fly in and stuff like that but it makes it all seem very real wow um, and that's then crazy. combining that story with just kind of like the power-ups um the enemies in this game are called mimics I don't know if you've ever played um, Prop Hunt before. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it played. Yeah. So that's what these enemies are. So these enemies can disguise themselves as inanimate objects. And it's kind of like a jump scare every single time. You're walking into the room and all of a sudden the lampshade changes into this, like, this black goo kind of thing and it attacks you. But you never really see it coming because they're always disguised as something different. And they can change as they run away as well, too. But you know what, um, Jared? You've actually kind of sold me on this game. Yeah, this game you, that I've seen advertising for on for the last I'm, few weeks, I'm suddenly sold on. I've like been so yeah. indifferent to it. But like, well, the demos, the demos up on Xbox. I don't know if it's. I imagine it's still there because it wasn't like a. Um, it was just a demo, but play it. It was. It was great. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It, it was fairly. It, was it fairly wasn't long. even on my radar, and you've kind of got mm. me wanting to play the demo now. Yeah, I actually work with. Um, yeah, <laughs> with them I, on the game, and, and you're a bit. Uh, of no, a, yeah, it was. You're all over you the place. You always seem to be like sponsored by everyone, Jared. You're a bit of a corporate <laughs> whore. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, okay. weddings don't come cheap, I guess. Yeah, that's very. Yeah, true. exactly. You know, you gotta. I gotta make my money somehow. You know. That's very true. All right. What's Shall your I... uh, What's your next one, Greg? Hey, Greg, what's the next uh, one, Greg? Well, these I didn't do it in an order. I started with my second one, which is weird. Um, so. I guess I'll... Uh, no one really needs to hear about Battlefront 2. Everyone's in the same page with that, I think. Uh, looks cool. Should mainly be nice. because it it looks better than Battlefront 1, so it automatically yeah. becomes interesting. better than Battlefront 1, that's all that really matters. Yeah, yeah it looks like they're, they're improving on a lot of things that everyone said, fucking, this is what's wrong with it. So yeah. That's all that needs to be said there. Crackdown 3. Ooh. I I don't think there's actually been much... Ex- like. They don't think they've given any details, but the idea of Crackdown 3, I'm very excited for. Are you referring to the cloud destruction? Yes. Ah, the, yes. The, they've, <laughs> they've the much touted and much hinted and very elusive idea of cloud processing, which they talked about when the original, like when the Xbox One was originally like being wheeled out um, in its fucking insane box. Um, they were <laughs> like... Um, insane box. I, I know what I meant. You know, like, uh, is it Jason <laughs> Voorhees? It's like all like up, and he's got like the uh, straight jacket on, and he's like no, wheeled around. No, that's on. the guy from Silence of the Lambs. That's Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal. I, whatever. I don't know my eighties horror. Um, <laughs> I've seen them around. Anyway, no, getting off my point. Cloud processing. Cool yes. idea. Let's see what comes yeah. of that. Let's see what I and also let's see what comes of more Crackdown because I think Crackdown one was fucking awesome and Crackdown two had good moments. So well, I mean, you, you have to give credit to to Microsoft because they looked and they went, "We want this to do X Y Z. The console mm. isn't power enough, powerful enough. We have to have this in our game. What are we gonna do?" And so they came up with this whole idea of having everything stored in the cloud and processed that way. Mm. And at first people were like, this is ridiculous. And then they showed off the demo, didn't they? Of Mm. the destruction actually happening in Crackdown 3. Mm. And even I was like, I don't care. I've not been a big Crackdown fan. I played a bit of Crackdown 1 and it never never really stuck. My my interest never stuck with it. Oh, I loved Crackdown 1. That's cool. But even I was looking and I was like, that just not even, even if you're not a fan of Crackdown, like, the implications that this pro the cloud processing could have are just ridiculous. Like it's, if it, I mean, if it catches on though, it could completely change the way. Oh yeah, this stuff gets made in the future. It could, and 
I hope it does. Um, I find my main warning sign is that they talked about it a lot when they were first releasing Xbox One, and then we've heard nothing about it since then. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> well, nothing. I mean, I didn't it right in the corner, so I mean... It makes me worry that possibly the reason why they talked such a big game about it at the beginning was because they were like, oh shit, the PS4 is literally more powerful than our Xbox One. How do we conquer the fears that the Xbox One is the weaker console? I know, let's talk techno babble and hint at the idea of up the line maybe we'll make the Xbox One more powerful with all the internet and the cloud and things. I mean, theoretically, it's totally possible. They, it's something they can do in computers right now. It, it, the technology exists, but rolling it out for gaming and things is a whole other matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd certainly be interesting to see where it goes. It mm. would be interesting. But that's one of the reasons why I'm excited for Crackdown 3, and the other reasons are I like Crackdown. So, you know, give me more. Fair play. Um, and give me exclusives to look forward to on my fucking Xbox. Oh God, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Greg, we're in a we're in a rut right now. E3, if they don't just show us like a bunch of crap, then yeah, they they mm, need to pull know. something out of their ass some hell. They can't just glide on on Scorpio, just selling it because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. this this should be interesting. Okay, so I I feel like a bit. Maybe not, but I feel like I get a bit of a rep for kind of being the guy on the podcast that isn't as Xbox loving as you two are. Ooh, We're not Xbox loving, I don't yeah, think. No, I think I we love... just own Xboxes. Yeah, well, I bought mine because it was cheaper. <laughs> well, there's that. But actually, one of the games I'm really looking forward to is actually Sea of Thieves. I've never... I. I, I see the, the the videos for that, and I have a friend at uni that said it'd be a cool idea, but I've n- never properly looked into it's, it. It's, it's essentially it, so you are on a pirate ship with other people, more than likely friends of yours. You would go around in a group, and you just go around in your boat, and you find explore. treasure on islands, and you come across other people on other boats, and you mount the... you like storm the boats, steal all their treasure, dismantle their boat, and you literally just be a pirate. That's a cool and idea. A lot of people yeah, from, loved it when Assassin's Creed did it. Yeah, exactly. From what I've seen like with the gameplay and stuff, it looks, don't get me wrong, it definitely looks interesting. I, I feel like I, I do need to see a little more to actually be convinced, because it's not really pulling me too much right yeah, now. But it does, I mean, the, the concept does seem interesting. I wasn't... I was interested in it, but then... Um, okay. I don't want to sound like a dick when I say this, but no. I went to the I went to EGX Res Ed, and I went to the industry party, and I got chatting to the studio head for Rare, and we got talking about Sea of Thieves, and he was saying to me about you know like the direction they were going with it and what they wanted it to become and what he saw the end product being. Hmm. And if the end product is anything like they're aiming for, then this game is going to be really, really fucking good. Really. Well, good. that's the thing. There's a lot, but there can be a bit of a difference between end product and you know, yeah, the, exactly. You know, they, what they theorize <clears throat> will happen. And it's one of the games that ever so often there are games that I look at and I think like you're probably going to be not as good as I'm expecting. But I'm still excited and I still want to give you a go anyway. Um, the last game I did that with was Destiny, which didn't end up well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm kind of I'm 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 keeping a bit of faith for Sea of Thieves. Me too. Me is Sea of Thieves, too. Is sea of Thieves just on Xbox or does it come PC as well? No, it's PC as well. Uh, yeah, because the, the whole uh, play anywhere kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's a play on. anywhere title. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'll, I'll probably end up playing that then. To be it looks good, actually. You know, like, the only thing that I feel will be an issue with it is that unless you are on mic to the people, so basically unless you know them, it, it's going to be very hard to play because it's very coordinated thing. Like, one person's in charge of yeah. cannons, one person's in charge of cells, one person's it's a bit steering, like, one um, person's... It's a bit like Guns of Icarus, then. Yes, yeah. yeah, very much in the sense everyone has their own task to do. And if you can't communicate with one another, I can see that being a real big issue. Yeah. 
But at the same point, if you have a group of, I think you only need four of you. So if you have you and you three other people who want to go around and do this, then I suggest looking into it. Um, we almost have the numbers on this show alone. We do. We do. And Matt has an Xbox, and we might be able to talk Matt into getting it. We can do it. We can all be pirates. Yeah, Matt, if you, <laughs> we know you're listening, Matt, so, so hit us up. The the Bulletin Boys and Matt. Yeah, and Matt. <laughs> and Matt. <laughs> and Matt. So, Jared, what we, what we got next? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> you can't say Injustice 2 because I said that. Injustice 2. Yeah, yeah, that was my other one I was going to do, and you stole it. So, so even though I don't own a PlayStation, I, I hopefully will one day. But oh, you're going to say what I think you're going to say. The Last through. of Us Part 2. Oh, fuck. Oh, I was expecting Spider Man. Ah, yeah. I'm, I'm disappointed in you. No, I wasn't going to say Spider Man. Well, Greg, you just had something about Spider Man. I'm so no. excited for Spider Man. See, on ah. the other hand, I'm so excited for The Last of Us 2. Like, just how much this, the the first Last of Us was kind of the only game that I've ever felt like sincere emotion toward, where oh, it yeah, literally definitely. kind of pulled on my real world emotions, and just a sequel to that. And it from I mean, we obviously haven't gotten much of it as well. Too, but it looks <laughs> like it's going to be just as good. I don't know Jared, if I can say what your real world emotions are. You just going. Huh, at things so. <laughs> yeah the, very, the, very, the first 15 minutes of uh last of us i was just like huh <laughs> neat and then that fin oh. happens like right before the game kicks in with the intro and that fin exactly. happens and you're like oh fuck did that actually see, just happen see huh. when my reaction went from huh neat to oh shit that happened that's how i know it was real greg i beg you after you after we finish this podcast just watch like a, a, the first 20 minutes of The Last of Us. Somebody oh, will have done it. Just... I, yeah, right. Okay, so my plan for this summer, which is completely irrelevant to a Gainsborough <laughs> podcast, is to get a job, which I may be even getting, uh, mm-hmm. and I'll make oh, the money nice. from that job to buy a PS4, and I can get Spider-Man, and I can finally play <laughs> Last of Us, and then I can bask yeah, you... in the glory it's an incredible game. It's, it's just, it, it, the experience alone and the emotion that you can get from the characters and the game looks gorgeous as well too and all the voice acting is just done perfectly. It's, it's a great game. It's probably the most connected to a video game character I've ever been. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I've I've you know, I've I've heard only good things about The Last of Us. It's it's still from what I can tell considered to be one of the best games. Like oh, it's dude, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I mean, yeah. it's it there are other story, other games out there that do the story a little bit better that have in terms of like but the, the, even then it's hard because like the pacing of The Last of Us is amazing yeah. all of the stuff that kicks off happens when it should just as you start to become complacent you get sideswiped mm-hmm. um, and it's never something ludicrous it's something that's perfectly plausible for the situation at hand Mm. And and for me, it was kind of never like there was never a moment where it kind of took me out of the experience where I felt like oh here's this side quest and it didn't feel like a game. It just like it was the full experience the entire mm. time playing. It, yeah, it, it's very much like um, it, as as weird as it sa- as sounds to say, it's a linear open world. Yeah, it's it's an open world, but there's a very set path that you follow through the open world. We've but never had it so good, guys. Honestly, Gaming is still, in such a great place now. It really it is. is. It really is. But play it. Play it, Greg. I will. I'll, I'm going to do it. Go. I'm, I'm so up for it. At least at uh. least watch the first 20 minutes, just because I want to know what you think. <laughs> well, I'll... Actually, record your reaction, and then send it to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could do. I could just put it like, just on the YouTube channel of Games Plus, and just like my first 20 minutes, just like, uh-huh. We okay. could do we could we could do a piece of somebody who's never played The Last of Us, like their first reaction to it. Because where it's like an old game, everybody thinks that everybody else has played it, and some people forget that there are still there's still a few people out there who haven't experienced it. I know a few. You We're should do. You should Greg's get all like, of your housemates crap. together who haven't played it. Oh God, that's a and, terrible idea. And all just kind of, <laughs> just kind of. React to the Last of Us, the first twenty minutes. 
a bit any emotional weight from that is gone immediately because I know what my housemates are like. I love them, <laughs> um, but they are rambunctious people, uh, especially when all four of us are together. And we will not take the game serious. We will not be oh, okay. all in collective tears. We will just be like calling <laughs> each other wankers and hitting each other and things. Oh, okay, maybe maybe do it solo then. Maybe maybe do it solo. <laughs> maybe. Okay, what's what's your next game, Greg? Oh, I mean, I've kind of already talked about it now, but Spider Man. Oh, I'm, that's, I'm, 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 I'm literally, I want it. I, although no, Bre- I'm very aware that they've showed almost nothing of the actual details of the game. They've just showed a, a trailer and said, oh, it's as good as you think it's going to be. So I know I'm like really thoroughly bought into hype because I know my imagination has run away with me about <laughs> everything this game could mean. I know that. I'm very aware of that, but I choose to ignore that fact because I like to be excited about games. I'm literally ah, oh, it's gonna be Spider-Man in the. He's gonna webbing and oh, in New it, York. And so, so, is so it gonna me, be like Spider-Man Two kind of thing? That's what I was gonna ask. I was like, have you, did you play like what all, all those Spider-Man games as well too? I yeah, did. I, I think I played. I, I, I think I only that. played one and two. I played uh, one and two as well. I played three, like people give three shit, but three was good as as well. Just saying, and you can I get played, that on three sixty. Uh, can you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Is it? Because yeah, wasn't there? What's this one? Because you had a an amazing Spider Man game that was like a movie game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. the Amazing Spider Man one and two, from what I heard, were pretty weak. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I only played the PS2 one, Spider-Man 1, and then I played Spider-Man 2 on PS2. Yeah. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, and, um, you yeah, know, I'd love the Spider-Man. I, that's so good, this web scene. I love Spider-Man. So, um, yes, I'm really excited for it. Hopefully it's it's good. I don't really see how they could get it wrong, because there's a pretty easy blueprint to work off of, because everyone knows that the early Spider-Man games are fucking legit. Can, can I everyone... just can I just yep. be that guy to, to, to interrupt you and just, just, just to say mm-hmm. EA managed to fuck up Battlefront when Battlefront That's had true. the perfect recipe. That's uh, true. That's do you think they're just, you. they're just going to be like, you can fight Doc Ock, but you need to put 50 yeah. quid up front in order to <laughs> disable his arms because no, otherwise it be he's just like too good. The Green Goblin will be a fucking DLC boss or some shit. Oh. DLC boss. Mm. I would <laughs> oh, I would literally just I would cry. I would openly weep. And I don't think they're going to do that because PS4 are more than happy to build up their cred. And after uh, that fucking, what's the game? The Rusty Dinosaur with the, the tribes and, and things. Horizon Zero Dawn. That's it. The Rusty Dinosaur. The Rusty That's Dinosaur. <laughs> um, um, after that one, their attitude, clearly the opposite attitude of Microsoft, funny that, um, is that they want to produce fun games that people like playing without all the shit people hate in games. Well, They're not- the- yeah, I mean, you see them talking about it too, like, hey guys, look at all the fun games we have. Look at well, all the consoles we sold that's uh, the thing isn't it though is that like microsoft and sony were always worried about that like they were always worried about new ips Mm -hmm. and they were very much reliant on building the ips they had because they were trusted and they knew they'd work Mm. um and then guerrilla games come along and was like hey we've got this game with robot dinosaurs and it did like two million copies in the first week and sony went huh you know, they did maybe a Jared. New IP, maybe yeah, they did a Jared. <laughs> hey, I gotta patent that before. <laughs> you do, it. otherwise, you know, it'll run away. It's um too catchy of a catchphrase. It is. Yep, it is. I gotta, I gotta take it. I feel like ah. that game kind of opened up their mind, and they were like, "Huh." Well, I mean, it's not. I mean, I'd say if anything, The Last of Us was the game that really opened them up because they were like, "Shit." This game has no history, it's got nothing that came before it, and it's one of the greatest games of that generation yeah. and possibly of all time. I mean, this is also based on hearsay. I've never played the fucking thing. But, like, <laughs> they know that they can build great stuff and people will f- follow. Like, you know, they, they know. And they're going to be thinking, well, let's do more of that. Let's just 
Uh, and they've won me over. I want to get a PS4. I want to be there. I want to. <laughs> I want to be a Spider-Man no, I, in the city. I want to kill a rusty dinosaur. I want to cry boat. in the first twenty minutes. I want to do it all. I'm in the same boat, Greg. All the PlayStation exclusives coming out this year are just too good not to pass up. And then Xbox is like the tumbleweed rolls across the street. And it's like, well, oh. yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> I was reading. Well, I, I saw a snippet of an interview with Phil Spencer, who said that basically Xbox are... I'm paraphrasing, this wasn't a direct quote. He, the, the gist of it was that Xbox are aware of the lack of first-party support and people were unhappy with it. And so he basically said that they are looking to change that and implement more first-party stuff. And that's cool, right? I'm happy yeah. to see them yeah, seeing what PS4 are doing does it, right does it and they can get feel, their shit in gear for next year. Does it not feel just like a, a, a wee bit too late? I mean, it is a little bit too late, but I've already bought the fucking box, so they might as well make it good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very valid point. So, yeah. <laughs> I lose nothing. You're kind of stuck at this point. I mean... It's like, yeah. hey, I, I kind of bought your console. Do you mind making some shit for it? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, do, don't give me... Uh, E3 is, like, around the corner, so who knows? Microsoft can just splooge a whole wave of amazing games onto our laps. I'm hoping so. they have, like, 15 games they haven't announced. Otherwise, Xbox are just... It's not going to be Because if they if they ride their, like, E3 performance with, like, the Scorpio, it's going to be, like... Yeah, yeah. For I, me, I the would Scorpio love... isn't sold for me. Like, just like better quality and like, I, I don't know. I want quality. They, or... they can't do that. There's no way yeah. that they could turn up to a video game convention and treat it like a tech convention. That's true. And try and pass off the Scorpio as like well, the best thing they have. I mean, the Scorpio have. supposedly comes out at the end of this year, and we've seen hardly really anything about it. I mean, there's been some specs here and there of it that we've seen, but really nothing hands-on I, I mean that's what the switch did and look how that turned out that's true that's well true. yeah but nintendo have always they've always been like they micromanage a very like a few very select good games don't they 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 don't need to that that's been their strategy for a while now for the last few few systems they just have really good sellers because they're not really working they're not hoping too much from the th third parties they know that yeah, people the, come to their console for the first party stuff they're like hey we got this new console we're not going to tell you about it but hey zelda's on it i'm like that's all that's all yeah. i need sign me yeah. up <laughs> I, that worked yeah. for millions sign of people that's because true the, yeah. game was, the game was allegedly great i never played it but hey -ho. oh I, I, oh, I would like to get a Switch as well. I, oh, I want to get it all. <laughs> I need it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm following on from your earlier point, Jared. Yes, the Scorpio coming out this year. Microsoft have seemingly had very little to show in terms of games and stuff for the, a while mm. now. And Scorpio represents a big risk. So it's yeah. really very possible, it's extremely possible, that at E3, they're going to come out with a whole bunch of awesome games and they're just gonna knock it out of the park please do that please mm. do it for yourselves all, and everyone that's all i can see is that they've just they're they're sitting on maybe not like a low but at least just like five or six grade a games they haven't told anybody yeah. about well i mean even nintendo like the people that you like with the switch they had like little to no information about it and then just kind of released it they came out and said like hey guys at e3 we're going to show a, a bunch of new games that we haven't even talked about yet and that's gets people kind of excited for it to get a switch like there's more options hmm they're, they're either xbox are playing their cards very 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 close to their chests or they don't have as much as people are expecting they must it, be. It's one of the other, and I really one. hope it's the first one. I really do. I would be, I, I would be blown away if they went to E3 with just Scorpio and like two semi. It, it would be like, it would, I definitely it would be think, like Scorpio and a Hololens update. I definitely think the Scorpio is going to be a big portion. Oh, it's going to be. If it comes the out in the event. holiday of this year, it's going to be a huge portion of their presentation. It has to be. Yeah, but why? Because a lot because of people, that's expensive. That's for an elite. That's not for them. I hope they don't do not. that because most people aren't going to get that. 
Well, yeah, like, I, for, like for me, like a modern, I guess, consumer, you can say, I don't really have any appeal towards the Scorpio. And if they're like, oh, well, now we have exclusive games on the Scorpio, that's just going to piss a lot of people off even more. Well, yeah, oh, that's, Could you imagine uh, if they say that? Wow. No, the don't backlash do it would be ridiculous. I've already said it into the air. <laughs> it. It's true. It Larry Herb from Xbox, he li- listens to this every week. Now that mm-hmm. Jared. That Jared from Nintendo has said that they're no, gonna go for that no. policy. No. Nintendo won't love me anymore if you associate my bad habits with them. <laughs> this is what he. This is what he listens to when he's sitting preparing this week on Xbox. He listens to this podcast. Yeah, he, he's got his finger on the pulse of modern pop culture in gaming because of this show. He mm-hmm. uses us to inform all of his opinions. And here, here we are, saying that they're gonna be a one-trick pony at E3. <laughs> well right what what they should do with the scorpio is and i think what they they have hinted that they're going to do is all the the games that come out for xbox will work on the old xbox but will just work better like it's kind of like the PlayStation, better it's, like the pro. it's just just the pro model just the pro model just like. the xbox pro but the scorpio the scorpio is going to be expensive enough that that can't be enough they need to they need to yeah. strike the balance of making the scorpio games that much better but not make the people on the ori- like actual well, original xbox but on the xbox one one like not look there like oh what the fuck the xbox point in box one one Wait, that's <laughs> stupid isn't it why'd they call it the no, xbox just, one anyway that's stupid as fuck they should have called it the infinity like they originally planned why are they xbox one that's oh stupid. dude come on the one makes more sense than infinity no it doesn't it's stupid no look at look at don't look at xbox as xbox look at it as microsoft and their general plan of we have one system that runs across everything and this is all you need that's true that's true that's why especially it's with the kind the of one, play because... anywhere thing and it's like everything's coming yeah. together with their whole not necessarily xbox but microsoft games you can play it on pc you can play it on xbox that's the thing you you have to one. you have to look at it not as Xbox, Xbox are a subsidiary of Microsoft, and Microsoft no. want the one system to rule. They're trying the world. to rule the world. No, yeah. Ben, it's annoying and confusing. They should have just called it the Xbox Star Striker or something cool. <laughs> the Xbox. Oh, well, they're calling the. Are they really going to call it Scorpio? No, it, it's only codenamed Scorpio, so I don't even think that's what yeah, they're going to call it. It's Project Scorpio. It's not Xbox Scorpio. It's Project I Scorpio. I hope they're going to come out with a shit name for that, I bet. It's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, it's not called the Scorpio. It's called the... Oh, the, it's the Xbox 9 and 3 quarters. It's well. going to be called the, the, the Xbox Sport no, or something. Be, yeah. It's going to be called like something X, The Xbox 4.0. Mm. Please no. <laughs> the Wii U was originally called Project Cafe. That's cool. And the the Switch was NX. No. Yeah, it was NX. Yeah. NX. And the, and then the Pro GameCube was Neo, was wasn't it? Yeah, Pro was Neo, which I think in a lot of ways sounds cooler. But I I can understand why they went with Pro. To be fair. Yeah. Pro okay. sounds good. Let's go with the, circle, the last then... game. The last game I have here. All right. I'll be surprised if either of you know anything about this game actually. Um, I mean, you may or may not be aware there's a Friday the 13th game coming out. I did see that, and it, it looks like, uh, what's that other game? Uh, Dead by Daylight? Is mm-hmm. that what it is? Yeah. It looks so good, and I played the beta because a friend of mine had a, oh, nice. he had a key for the closed beta on PC. So good. So good. So basically, it's seven versus one. You play as Jason Voorhees, or you play as one of the campers at the camp. And if you're one of the campers, you have to survive Jason. When I played it, I think they've changed it now, but when I played it, you had to survive Jason and not be killed, basically. Um, And there were a number of things that you could do, but the main objective was to call the police, and then... Jason was alerted to the fact the police were coming and you had five minutes left before the police came. And if you could survive until the police came, then it was like a, a victory for the campers. Mm. Um, but there's yeah, all... I, I... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that the thing that interests me is that there's all kind of cool things that you can do. So when you walk into a door, when you walk through a door, you can close the door um, and then you can open a window and make it look as if you climbed out the window, but really you're hiding under the bed. 
or you oh. you can do all kinds of things so like you can run past the cabin and you can say Jason's inside you can open a window so he thinks the window's just open and someone's come out and you could sneak around into the house as he's coming out uh, when you play as Jason you do feel like Jason he has like a teleportation ability he can also mark the map for a couple of seconds to see where people are I don't so, know too much about Friday the 13th. Is Jason like, Voorhees actually, actually teleport? Is he supernatural? I always just thought he was a bloke with a hockey mask. No, no, he's actually supernatural. Oh, shit. Oh. Um, it wasn't in the first ones. It was in some of the later movies where he could, like... I think it was literally, like, the eighth movie or some shit. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Friday the 13th movies? Jeez. It was, like, when he went so to space or some movies. shit. I saw, like, the 20... 20- 10 one or whatever one that was most recent that's the one i've seen i've seen some of the older ones did you have like you had friday the 13th up to four and then jason goes to hell then jason came back then jason (laughs) died then there's the one with him and freddy fight or something yeah there's one with him and freddy fight there's one where they put his body on a spaceship to transport it somewhere and he comes back to life and kills everybody on the spaceship doesn't isn't friday the 13th the franchise where in order to hold on to the property, the people who owned Friday the 13th made a Friday the 13th film in, like, a six-week space, and it was, like, really shit. It wouldn't surprise me. Most of the Friday 13th movies <laughs> aren't amazing. I, I, I'd love to watch them. It's like um the Child's Play films. I watched them because I wanted to see them degrade into stupider and stupider films. <laughs> oh, if you think that's bad, have you, have you ever heard of a franchise called Leprechaun? I have not. Oh, yes. <laughs> Leprechaun is literally like Friday the 13th, but the guy who is the murderer oh, is a leprechaun. Isn't there one when they're in space as well, too? They did leprechauns in space yeah, or something? No, that's, like that's, that's alien, Jared, okay? It's not just <laughs> leprechaun in space. No, it's just a leprechaun. It's yeah, it's literally, he's like a, a weird mixture of a leprechaun and a goblin. He's not a leprechaun like we know him. He's like a really sort of ugly, grotesque-looking leprechaun that kills Shit. people. That's dangerous. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, Friday the 13th looks really, really <laughs> awesome. Um, I just googled leprechaun and um, one of the results is a grotesque looking leprechaun creature thing I'm, I'm guessing that's it yeah yep, that's <laughs> yeah he looks pretty sinister to be fair there's all kinds of like the, the execution in this game are ridiculous absolutely ridiculous you can like throw people into the fire and behead them and do all kinds of crap when you're Jason it's ridiculous it does sound good. I'm, I'm always interested yeah, in a bit of asymmetric stuff. Is, is the, the, the thing that got my attention was the whole ability to like manipulate the environment to trick the Jason player into thinking you're somewhere that you're not. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as it kind of become like a, a survival mind game, it automatically had my interest. Mm. Uh-huh. It sounds pretty strategic, and it sounds like it pushes people yeah. to think on their feet and be quite clever with how they play, which is brilliant. yeah. And that, that's one of the things is that, like you have to be careful because when you call the police, because obviously like Jason is like haunted by his mum or something. He has like some kind of he can communicate with his mum even though his mum's dead. Spooky. Because because movie logic, but um. <laughs> In the game, when you alert, when you called the police as a camper, her mum says to him, "She's calling the police quick." And there's like a little icon that comes up, so he he lets you know he knows where you are. He knows that the countdown's starting, Uh, and then it kind of gets more intense from there. So if if you've if you've not seen anything about it, go and check it out. The guys who are making it, um, they're really cool. They're kind of they're doing that thing that a lot of companies are doing where they're kind of becoming edgy and slightly roasting people on Twitter. <laughs> so, Have you guys uh, seen the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account? I know oh, of gosh, it, no. but I, I, I don't keep up to date with it. It's headed up by, I can't remember the, the guy's name, but he's a, His name is Aaron. Right, his name's Aaron. But he, like, just roasts people and just does crazy memes and shit on Twitter. They, I didn't, like, say could just pay him to just be a fucking nutter on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, the only reason I know is because he's, he's friends with Aaron of Game Grumps. I see. Oh, nice. Um, and they, they, what they did was um, 
they tweeted Aaron from Game Grumps and it was like, oh, do you think you could eat this? And it was a Sonic head made of cupcakes. And uh, the Game Grumps Aaron tweeted back. He was like, yeah, come, like, come at me. I'll do it any day. And then about like four or five months later, I think it was, they tweeted him. They was like, oh, here at the Sonic Twitter, we never forget. And it was a, the, the picture of him saying, come at me. And then a picture of them with like 12 boxes of cupcakes. And they showed up to the Game Grumps headquarters, like slammed the 12 boxes of cupcakes on the table. They were like, right, here you go. Eat as many as you can. And he had to sit there and like eat as many as he could. Why don't people <laughs> ever come to our headquarters and give us cupcakes? <laughs> I know. Right? I know. But yeah, that's why like they, they do have that sense of humour. That does sound good. But yeah, Friday Fame. Check it out. It Sounds looks interesting. Good. It looks awesome. Looks good, yeah. What what, uh, what you... we got next, Jared? Okay, well, bring it full else? circle. Have to pay homage to my uh, beautiful overlords, uh, Nintendo. Ha <laughs> ha. But um, Super Mario Odyssey, that definitely has to be my. Ooh, that's the one where his hat's magic or something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's where he has the magic hat. Yes, yeah, so if that's what you take from it, then yes. And not nice. the one where it's uh, in New York City or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, and now here, when I first saw the trailer, I was just like, "Huh, okay," because Mario's walking around with these people, and they're like normal people. Is is Mario not a normal person then? I don't know. But after after a while watching the gameplay and stuff, it looks interesting. And I love Mario games. I loved 3D World. That's probably one of my favorite Mario games as well, too. No, oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed 3D World. Hmm. But no, yeah, Super Mario Odyssey looks really good. I'm kind of into because it looks kind of semi-open world-ish, which is kind of a way Nintendo's kind of been going with their, with their games, trying something new, like with Zelda. Um, so I'm interested to see how this game plays out as well. I kind of... It, it does have my interest. Just because... Mm. I really want... that kind of Mario game. Because it's like... Yeah. Um, the Mar- the last Mario game I really fell in love with was... Super Mario Sunshine. Back, oh, back yeah, in yeah. the day. I really enjoyed Sunshine. Back in the day. And um, this back kind of seems like a return to that kind of gaming. Mm-hmm. So... I don't have a Switch, but only because I can't warrant buying a Switch yet because there's not enough out there that interests me. Oh my gosh, Super Mario Sunshine came out in 2002. There you go. 15 years ago, practically. Jeez, gosh. Um, um, but yeah, yeah once, no, besides once Zelda, out, there, yeah. Isn't, there isn't anything amazing No. on the Switch. You and I have like a couple games. Mario Kart's fun. You have Mario Kart, Mario Kart, but I, yeah, I can I can wait until Odyssey comes out to get that on Mario Kart. Yeah, sounds good. good. Yeah. Yes, Greg, as always, chipping in right at the end. Well, <laughs> when you guys talk about a game, I have very little to say about. Um, I generally just stay quiet and let you guys chat because I don't no, really it's, have it's much cause to say. It's because you're munching on the Toblerone. Don't even lie. Uh, my toe is not here yet. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for it. You're waiting like for your it. Apple. That's that's poor. We've been recording for 54 minutes. He, uh, well, to be fair, he had to go to the library first, and then he was going to get a toe for me on the way back. Uh, oh, excuses. Okay. excuses. Excuses, yeah. So, what games that haven't, I guess, technically been officially announced are you guys kind of looking forward to? Assassin's Creed Sorry. Empire. Oh, yeah. Because that could potentially be very good if they've learned all their lessons. Especially, or... I was gonna say, especially if they're like, hey, maybe we shouldn't come out with a game every year. Maybe we should work <laughs> an extra year on these games. Maybe that, that'll work. That's what I've been wanting them to do for a while. Like, to properly sit there and fucking cook a game instead of just throwing everything now, on our plate yeah. like when it's not ready yet. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't actually, I didn't play like the last two Assassin's Creed games, but I heard they were very shit. Well, they weren't very shit. They were just like victory, not victory. What was it? It's, syndicate. Syn- syndicate. Yeah, that it. It did not hold my attention. It was hard. It wasn't that it. It was a finished game, but they just there was no heart in it. It was a very cynical. Just by the numbers, this is what Assassin's Creed in London would be like. Sort of. Game. I love Assassin's Creed games too. It's just, I think we're in my. Like the story kind of what, what what with what drove me from like Assassin's Creed One through like Revelations with like Ezio and stuff like that. That story was just 
incredible as well too i like the story of those games yeah you really need something to drive you through fucking revelations gotta hate that one like like with black flag i am playing it i couldn't tell you what's going on but it's fun i love love exploring and driving a pirate ship but i couldn't tell you what's going on in the story (laughs) yeah i I find it a bit difficult to follow the actual overarching story of assassin's creed i just i like the stories they tell in history but I don't. I'm not really interested in in the Abstergo and like the original yeah. creators stuff. I'm not so. That's not really me. Um. But yes, they're gonna make it. It's Assassin's Creed Empire or Victory. Well, I can't remember what the fucking new one's called. Actually, tell um, a lie. Sorry, go on. I've just reminded. I remembered something. Go on. You were saying sorry. I think it's it. It's leaked to be set in Egypt, which is yeah. brilliant. Oh, go this back. is the one you're yeah. talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go back um, far away and try some new shit with the fucking license. Just, ah, just, I'm, I'm excited for what this could potentially mean. But, you know, no one put your fucking eggs in the basket or whatever the phrase is, because it might not be great. Do not yeah. pre order it. Do not pre order it. Do not pre order it. I don't have just much yes. to say about Assassin's Creed, but. I was looking up because I have a an Iron Man poster. It's one of those posters that's one of the the comic covers that they put. Is this going to be even remotely related? <laughs> not, no, it's not related to 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 Assassin's Creed, but it's related to games that have been announced. And nothing more that I'm looking forward to. Ah, uh, all right. Which is the Avengers game that they announced. Like I heard about. Oh, that. that's right. Two months ago. I think it was about a month and a half ago. Two months ago, they was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh yeah, we're As making an Avengers I, game." I think we talked about this on the podcast, actually. We're making an Avengers game, and then nothing has been said about it since. Yeah. And I looked at Iron Man, and I was like, oh, shit, yeah, they're making an Avengers game. That's going to be fucking awesome. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. I can't even remember who's making it. Who is it? Because it was a studio. I was like, ah, this this could go either way. Avengers game. Who is it? Avengers game, yeah, this is a big deal. Come on, Polydon, just tell me who it is. Marvel and Square <laughs> Enix. Why aren't you looking at this up on the Fabulous Games Bulletin website, Ben? Um, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> not that. Did, <coughs> I, did I say Polygon? I, I, I keep doing that. I, I keep missaying our name and mispronouncing it. Awkward. Just so, to tell I, mean, you know, a- I, I assume you just Googled it. Just Yeah, to- I literally just Googled a Marvel yeah. Avengers game. I'm going to Google it in the Games Bulletin website, Avengers, and see who gets more information first. Ooh. Ooh. I'm just looking at Assassin's Creed. I there go, Marvel's yeah. Avengers. Square like Enix said. and Marvel announce partnership. I believe it's Square Enix that you're looking for, Ben. It is indeed, yeah. Haha, yeah. I was there first with the fantastic, wonderful Games Bulletin website. Go look I mean, at it. It sometimes the, breaks down. I, I, I totally to didn't just say era. Square Enix like two minutes ago, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's okay. okay. All right. No, All right, it let's... it looks like it could be promising though. It could. It does be. look. Like it. it could be fun. Let's it was it. one of those spur in a moment things that I'd completely forgotten was even a thing that existed. Mm. Um, and then I looked and I was like, oh no, wait, wait, this could be really awesome. Anything else? I can't think of anything else. Pokemon. Yeah, I was sitting there okay. and I was like, if do you know the, what? The I... Switch the Switch version of Pokemon. Oh, oh wait, is that um, actually confirmed? No. Well, it, this is the rumored lots of All Stars rumor. or something, isn't it? Yes. If they yes, did like the third a Switch, series. If they if they did a proper Switch Pokemon game, I would get a Switch. Yeah. Because there's like the pro- like the third game, like you know how it always has like Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. The third game is supposedly called Stars. It's just a rumor, but it would supposedly come out on the Switch as well, too. And yeah, that was uh, everything that was said, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. There's not much on it, or if it's confirmed or not, or anything like that as well, too. It's just people found, I think it was in the in the code of Pokemon um, Sun and Moon, that there was like um, a way that you can have really high-res um, graphics on it as well, too. High quality, or something like that. Yeah, um, I'm just looking here. 
Oh, they're, they're like teasing it. They have like a picture of Pikachu looking through a telescope. Yeah, see, now just recently, Nintendo announced a new, like, not clothing line, but a new line of, um, like, plushies and backpacks and stuff that's called, like, Look Into the Stars or something. Like, oh, so those sure if... bastards. I know. So they're cheeky, just... aren't they? And there's, like, a picture of Pikachu looking through a telescope with Cosmog, and there's a bunch of, like, galaxy-themed backpacks and, like, Cosmog plushes and stuff like that, which is... Yeah. And that just happened recently, too. The tagline was, look upon the stars. Look upon the stars, yeah, it is. And they're just like, oh, Nintendo, just, just give it to me. I'll take it. Yeah. Do you that's, know, okay. Um, I completely that forgot about that. Me, Two things that I would like to see as well is... um. I'm not normally one for remasters, but I'm looking forward to the Crash Me remaster. Ooh, yes. um, yeah, you were talking about that Which makes me you? want a Crash Team Racing remaster as well. Yeah. Um, and well, fucking hell, what was huh. the other one I was going to say? I completely forgot. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Oh, Pokemon Coliseum. Oh, jeez. Uh, even if they don't do... A remaster of Pokemon. Like an, an updated Pokemon co- one, a new one. Not Pokemon Tournament. Actual yeah, even Pokemon if they Coliseum. Do, like, with the eShop and they put Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 on the eShop of the Switch, that'll just be amazing. Yeah, oh, that's at, all I, I'd at be least, fine with that. At least something like that. Yes, because I think, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess they have the potential of doing a stadium now that has, like, every Pokemon as well, too. But, like I said, even if they just did 1 and 2 on, like, the eShop or the virtual console of the Switch... I'm fine with that. That sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't think There's of anything something. else, lads. I can't think of anything else either, my friends. I can't just think of anything. <laughs> huh. Huh. They're doing a remastered of, <coughs> of Jack and Daxter? That's awesome. What's this about Jack and Daxter? They're doing the a PS4 version of the Jack game, Jack and Daxter games. I never played it. Oh, Jack and Daxter is awesome. That was my that was the bee's knees. You're really down with the hip lingo when you, Jared. I am. It's it's, it's the. I, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, this has been a well, really actually, nice episode. Yeah, we actually like, still had a normal length like podcast too. I just looked and I was like, I've been recording my audio for an hour and four minutes. Yeah. Nice. Look at us pulling something together even when we don't have stories. Look at that. Oh, this is. I've come away from this very optimistic. There's a lot yeah. to look forward to this year. See, and if you guys liked us just talking about nonsense and what games you like, then you know, tell us. Yeah. If you're us, still here, give us some pointers. If there's like other sort of things that yeah. you want us to explore on the show, because we don't have to only talk about news of the week. We can talk about other things. Yeah. We are human beings yeah. with multifaceted personalities and all sorts of interests. We could just talk about Greg for an hour. That we works could. Too. The Greg cast. The Greg cast. Greg on your face. We will call Greg it. on your face. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I think that's I a good it. place to end it then because I don't think I yep. want to go down that road just yet. Nope. <laughs> I feel like I need a week to prepare for that. Greg on your face. Doesn't next time, Greg will, be, Greg will be all over your face next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's the slogan. <laughs> Wow. Okay, Magic. well, do you guys have anything you want to say before we head off? No, please no. Just stop it here. <laughs> um, I don't have much to say other than, yeah, no, just absolutely let us know if you yeah, have any cool fun. ideas, anything you want us to discuss. Any questions you have, we can answer at the end of the show or at the beginning yes. of shows, that sort of thing. Well, I mean, you know, we, we kind of, up. we can always... We can always trim it down to like the three biggest news stories and then do whatever shit people want us to do. Well, you know, we, we can, can even make them shorter too if people are, are bored midway through our book. Yeah, there is that I, as well. I like, I like the length that we do now. I, f- I feel like it's a good natural length for a conversation. Yeah, and I feel like we, I feel like yeah. we get through enough. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the general could, gist is... We could is... trim it down. We could just cut out yeah. all of Jared's lines if you like. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even really here in the first place. So, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, he doesn't really... Sometimes he just kind of sits there and minds himself. So. I'm just here, you know. I have to be the Nintendo fanboy that can regulate in whenever I need to. Yep, that's, that's it. That's well, it's it. It's like um, Nintendo's representation. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay, <laughs> right. well... 
at some point, like I said before, we will have another guest on. Um, we will have that gentleman joining us, who is from the the indie studio, where we shall discuss the the indie movement and why so many people are moving to indie from AAA. And I can ask him all the questions I have about what it's like to be an indie developer slash game wizard. Yeah, that's I can the... sit here and listen. You can go, ah, oh, but can you code Nintendo? And if he, <laughs> exactly. if he says no, that's it. You're not interested. Then I'm just, no, just I'm interested in g- give him the slow shake of the head. Just nope. You won't even see it. You're just gonna hear just the wind gazing <laughs> you. That's how. That's how <laughs> shook in my head is. Oh dear. Okay. Well, we will see you guys next week then. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs>